Hello there, this is Sue at Miller's Laboratory. Welcome back, I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'd just like to take a moment and say thank you to everyone for the nice comments and the likes on part one of this of this series. I really appreciate that. Uh, this is my first venture into a how-to type of a video and I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot and I'm glad that you guys are liking it too. So thank you again for all your encouragement. In our last video, we were working on um, this. I have three of these here, and we were working on this one, putting the envelopes together to create this flip flop journal. And I'm just gonna skip to this one here, which is sort of like the one, that, the stage that we're going to work on now. Um, so when I flip through this one, there's still no pages in it like we have in here. But if you look at this one, all of the envelopes have been lined. And so that's what I'm going to work on here next, is making all of these pretty. All right, there's that one. Now, this is not particularly exciting um, stuff to watch. So I may not do the whole thing on camera, just kind of give you an idea on a couple of these of how to do it, and then I'll turn it off and finish, and then we'll come back. So let me set this one aside here, and we'll go back to this guy here. And we're just going to start at the beginning here, and we've got this envelope here, which has the, um, the pocket exposed, and we are going to be using it as a pocket there. So... As I said in the last video, I have printed out a kit from Roxy Creations. I will look up the name of it and put it down below in the description because it's not coming to my mind right now. It's some, some ephemera and it just has all these little bits of documents in it and it's many pages. It's a really generous kit. It just has lots of really, really great, um, mostly Italian antique sort of things and these different antique neutrally colors and so that's what I'm using to line the envelope and I've just got a pile of those here so um, I'm not really a whole a whole lot concerned with the direction that the letters go in in the writing although I would prefer that they're not upside down but I don't mind if they're sideways. So what I need to do is line this part here so that when you open this up, it just looks nice. And so we're gonna need a piece of paper that is a little bit deeper here than what's exposed. It doesn't have to come all the way down, but you want it to come down a little bit in there so that if you're tucking something you know, in or out, you're not seeing the edge of that. So we need a piece of paper that is as wide as this. And then it needs to be a little bit deeper in the envelope than there. So I'm looking at these two here, and these are not quite wide enough. You can see they are um, too short going this way. Let's see about this one. This one's perfect, okay? So it's definitely wide enough from here to here, and it's definitely wide enough from here to here. So I'm going to grab my trimmer, and I'm going to cut that off so it's nice and straight at the top. that's going to be right there. I'm not going to worry about that little white bit there and you'll see why in a little bit. All right and then it only needs to come down about this far. I'm just going to tear that. And you can see that's why I have all these little pieces here is that I've already been doing this with the other two journals that I worked on and all these little bits are really nice for making um, a collage page so I'm not going to throw any of them away. They're really nice to have. Let me just grab my scissors here. Well, let's see here. I'm just going to cut it a little bit narrower than what it is. All right. Okay. Well, there's that. That'll work just fine. I'm just going to test it and make sure I can slide it in there without it getting bunched up. Perfect. Right, that's going to be really good. 
All right, so we're gonna use some glue and um, I'm gonna pause this for just a second and grab a glue book. Okay, I'm back. I like to use um, glue stick for this because it, you're sliding that into an envelope and it, it moves around and gives you a little bit of play time to get it right versus the um, art glitter glue, which kind of like once you stick it down, it's done. So, all right. So that one's going to go right in there like, whoop, like that. And it gets a little floppy because it's wet. You just kind of have to ease it down in there. And once you get it in there, you can move it around a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. And we're just going to smooth that down. All right. And that's the first one. Okay. Now our next one, if you remember, it's these two sides. So we're going to have two the same here pretty much. And we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to try to find a piece that fits. Um, it's, a, you know, the width is good this way. And then it has to be deep enough to tuck a little bit underneath here. The one thing that I'm going to do is make sure, if you can see, if I hold this up close, the adhesive like that you would lick for this envelope goes all the way to the edge. So for this one, I'm going to be putting the paper right up to the edge of this envelope flap. And I'm going to come back to this one here. And this one is like the perfect width, I think. It's just a little bit narrow, so I think I'm going to go with this green one here. there. You know what I think with this one, it's got, got a little bit of a funky shape here. Kind of flares out a little bit there. I'm not really going to worry about that. If there's a little bit of white showing there, that doesn't bother me. So I'm just going to cut it straight here. So we're going to cut it right off. And I just like to fold that over so I can see where to cut. Sometimes I use a pencil, but kind of a lazy cheat way to just make yourself a crease and use that as your pattern. Okay. Okay. Now I want to just check and make sure this is going to slide in because there's nothing worse than getting all the glue on there and then it gets jammed up and you can't get it to go in there. So yeah, that's going to be good. All right. So grab my glue book here again. Everybody has their favorite glue stick, and um, I've tried lots of different ones. And you might be surprised to find that my favorite one is um, it's children's glue stick, and I get it at Target. You can buy it in big packages, and actually now is a great time to start looking for it because back to school they always have it in the store. You can also order it from their website. But I really like it. I think it's it holds really well, and I and I like that it's purple because I can see where I've got it, and um, so that's what I that's what I tend to use most of the time. Oh, this one's going to be a little bit challenging, but that's okay. Then you can see the fun of it here. Okay, so it's all bunched up here. We're just going to kind of gently push it down. And that's the beauty of having the glue stick, is that you can you can move it around a little bit there. And I'm just reaching underneath here to make sure it's all pressed down nicely. And I'm not going to fold that flap down right now. We're going to let that glue stick get nice and dry before I would fold it. So we'll leave that right like that. Now I would fold this over and I would do the same thing on the next one. I'm not going to show you that because it's the same thing. It's 
kind of boring to watch me cut and glue, I would assume. This one's just like the first one we did, only larger, okay? So we're gonna be cutting this flap all the way to come down to here. The one thing you might wanna do on this one though is you can see a little bit of the original envelope flap and I would probably have my paper come up and cover that up too, just so that looked nice. I can show you that. It's a little more fussy because you have a little bit more tricky cutting to do. But, so let's do that one just so we, we can see it. Okay, cut this out. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it off here too. Up here my, I have an Epson, um, oh, what do you call it? The one, the tank where you can, the eco tank. And I don't know why, but it tends to grab my paper in the corner and fold it up when it's printing and leave these messy black spots. Um, it didn't matter for this. Um, but sometimes that is super annoying. And I did a little research online to try to figure out why that was happening. And I think what it is, is just that it's so humid that my paper is a little bit damp all the time. Um, it's like I live, I mean, Michigan in the summer can be like Florida. It's just so humid. And um, so I think that's what's going on. And unfortunately, there's not much I can do about that other than learn to work with it. So, um, and I was happy that for this particular thing, it didn't matter. Sometimes I'm printing out a really beautiful collage page or something, and then it's ruined. And boy, does that make me upset. <laughs> All right, okay, so we don't really need this to come all the way down here, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just actually gonna just tear it off a little bit. Just, we don't need it down to go all the way to the bottom of the envelope. All right, so what I'm checking is that it's wide enough here to cover up that bit, and it looks like it's gonna be good. I might just trim a little bit more off the bottom here. It looks like it might be just a little bit large. Okay, so tricky on how to get this shape, but I think the way that I'm going to do it is by feel. That's the way I do a lot of things. I can see where the edge of this envelope is, and I'm just going to feel along that with my fingernail, right like that, okay? So I know that that's where the edge of this envelope is, and then here is where it is. Um, right here, this edge right here, okay? And if I flip it over to the plain side, you can see it. So I'm going to cut this, but I'm going to leave it, I'm going to cut the cutout part a little bit smaller so that I can make any adjustments that I need to and that I haven't made it too small. We're just going to check and see, does that fit on there? And that actually, other than me not cutting this perfectly straight, I think that's going to do. I think that will work just fine. Looks like everything will fit, and this will fit here. I might just take a little sliver off of here again. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on that. And I think what I'm going to do is just get the glue on the bottom and I'll get it down in the envelope and then we'll fuss with this part up here. Okay, open them up. Scooch them in there. It's not elegant in any way. Now one thing that I should tell you is that you could do all of this with the envelopes before 
you hook them together as we did in the last video. You could do all your flaps and stuff first and it might be a little easier if stuff isn't hooked together but I like to design the book first and figure out how the pages and how the envelopes are going to hook together because like you wouldn't want to cover you wouldn't want to have covered the whole flap of this one because most of it is glued down and doesn't even show. I just flip that over. So if you had covered the back of this, it would just be wasted. And I'm not one to waste paper. So that's why I do it afterwards. That's your choice though. Okay, this is all fitting really nice in here and everything looks really good here. So I'm just gonna flip this up like that. Just stick a little piece of paper underneath there and we'll put some glue on that flap. And of course, I'm gonna have to trim that flap, but I'll do it after I glue it down. So, because this is a triangle shape and the flap is a square. Okay, just make sure that little glob of glue is gone. And I'm just making sure here that I'm not gluing it to anything underneath. All right. So it's right here. So I'm just going to go in here and trim that off with my little scissors. Get underneath it here. Try to be neat. Oop, got him away there. See how we did. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. And then this one's going to open up and this one will be lined too. Very nice. All right. Okay. Now up here we have this little coin envelope. Same thing here. We're just going to cut a little piece of paper. I would take this liner off and expose the adhesive that's underneath there. And I would glue this one on and then I would flip over to the other side of the flap and trim it to match the curves there. Okay, I'm not going to show you that. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But I do want to show you now when I get to this one because this one's a little bit different. This one is going to be a pocket. It's going to slide in from the side. So we're going to want to line the inside of this. And I can just tell you that um, I found that uh, with these digitals, these envelopes were so tall that I actually had to piece it. I didn't have one piece that was long enough to do the whole thing. So I just tore one edge and glued it over and it didn't even, it doesn't even show. It doesn't matter. Okay. But this one here is going to be totally closed and we're going to be cutting the top off and we're going to be making a top loading pocket out of this one. So we want this part to be closed up. And you could just glue it down or glue a piece of paper right over that. But if I do it that way, then I'm going to lose all this real estate here. And when I would come in from the top, I would be hitting my edge here and I would only be able to use this much of the pocket instead of this whole thing. So what I want to do with this one is I want to glue some paper underneath here to extend this envelope so that it comes all the way up to this crease. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a couple scraps that I have here and actually look at, this one is actually long enough, oh my goodness, and this is perfect. So I'm going to just trim this down. This is only going to show a little bit. We're going to be, if, if you recall, we're going to be putting masking tape over every single fold, every single envelope connection um, where it hinges and where we're going to be doing stitching to make it stronger. And so this is hardly going to show. It's going to have tape over most of it and it's just going to peek out a little bit. Okay, so we need it to be about... about that long okay and so this one what I'm gonna do is I am going to use I'm gonna use the um, the um, 
art glitter glue for this one okay and I'm going to come inside here and I'm going to put glue right along that edge just like this oh we're a little bit we're a little bit stuck there so we had a little excitement <laughs> at my house and here at Miller's laboratory um, not in a good way but it's okay everything turned out okay um, we have a road project going on in front of my house this um, this summer and this fall they are completely ripping the road up and and redoing it it was really needed my road was in horrible condition and people would go flying by and um, it was there was big bumps the asphalt was in really bad shape and it was just it was annoying to the drivers and it was annoying to us here in the house now I'm just taking my glue let me stop yammering here for a second I want to make sure that I don't have any loose flappy flap inside the envelope that's going to get hung up on like a tag that I might insert into the pocket. So I've also put glue right along this edge. And this is a little tricky, but we're going to slide this in here. And match it up to the edge. And I think we've got it. Let me pull that back out just a hair if I can. You can't you can't play with this too much. Once you get this stuff glued down, it's there. But that's okay. This will work just fine. Alright. So now it's still a pocket, but now it comes all the way out to the edge. So that when it becomes a top loading pocket, I have the full pocket here to use. Okay? Alright, so that's how I did that one. I'll just flip here. This one we're going to do the same thing, okay? This was that white one, and it's going to be a top loader also, so we're going to do the same thing and put a piece of paper under here in that one. But let's get to this one. We have two window envelopes in here, and I, I just want to show you quick how I did this one. Um, not hard, okay? It's The back of it is here. You look inside here, you can see the windows down here, and that's that little slot that we cut. So everything that we glue down for the inside to make it pretty is actually going to glue to this side so that we see it through the front part. So we need a piece to cover up our windows and then we need a little piece to so that um, when we look through that slot it looks nice. Okay. So I'm just going to grab this one here and I'm going to look back at the front to help me with the sizing. And to be about this wide. Okay. So I was saying, <laughs> so they're working on our road. And um, last night I got home from work and my husband said, we have water in the basement. Now we live in an old house and we get water in our basement for lots of reasons. Um, when it rains really hard we get water in our basement. Um, but this was not the good kind of water. This was water coming up through the drain in the floor, coming up from the sewer. This was sewage. <laughs> and so um, we found out that the city did not provide the city blueprints did not show where our sewage connection was from our house and so when the company came to work on the road and dug it all up they just totally crushed our connection out at the road so it was it was all crushed down and full of dirt and all of our shower water and everything else could not go through and wound up in my basement so um, so we were sad, <laughs> um, but the people were so nice about it, they couldn't have been nicer. Um, and this was just last night, and we called them, and they actually came this morning and fixed it, fixed the whole thing. So I had to clean it up when I got home from work today, but it's all done, so I'm happy about that. 
So all's well that ends well. Just a little hiccup. That's how life is. Full of hiccups. All right. So I've got this piece cut. It's a nice piece. And I put glue all the way to this edge and I probably didn't need to do that, but that's okay. It's no big deal. Okay, we're gonna slide this one down inside here. it's straight. I will check it from the other side and make sure that the writing looks straight through the window. Oh, that looks really good. I love that. That looks really nice. Okay. Very, very nice. Okay. And then we just need a little piece up there to cover that. Okay. I'm going to go to some of these little scrippy scraps that I have. Here's a good one. Just a little one. Okay, it's just going to get glued right in here like that. Just make sure it's deep enough. Okay. So I appreciate, I, in the last video I asked for feedback from you guys, wondering what you thought about me selling these as like a naked journal um, where people could come in and put their own stuff in and um, everybody that answered that seemed to think that was a good idea so I think I'm going to try that um, you know that that's a kind of a nice thing to do too because it's less work for me and so maybe the price can be a little bit lower and um, then you guys can buy the book all this fussy stuff is already done and then you can just do the fun part and put whatever um, embellishments you want in there. Oh my goodness, this is super fussy, guys. Okay, let's get that in there like that. Okay, let me check it. And now all I'm seeing through there is some kind of, I mean, you barely just see any of it, but I don't see the blue anymore, and that was my goal. Okay, good. All right, now on the other side of this guy here, just take that off a little bit. Um, he's going to be a top loader too. So we're going to come in here and we're going to close this off. I'm going to do this one a little bit different because it's just a white envelope with a white envelope here, white and white together. And I think I'm just going to use a piece of white paper there to cover that up because um, it will look fine. It will look like it's part of the envelope. Now the question is, can I find a little piece of white paper? Here we go. Is that long enough? It is. Okay, very good. Let's just cut that quickly. So with a shop name like Miller's Laboratory, I, you might have in your mind that um, like it's very like sterile and and orderly and everything and my my workshop could not be further from that um, so I apologize if I've given you the wrong idea um, I'll just tell you um, how my shop got its name it's a cute story um, so I have been um, a crafter for my whole life and I when my kids were little I used to teach rubber stamping classes for a shop nearby here for these really nice ladies that owned it. Um, it was such a fun job. They just gave me free reign and I got to design the classes that I wanted to do and um, they would get the products that I wanted to have and it, it was really fun. I did that for several years and I, I had a great time doing it. Um, so I would work down here in my in our basement. I have this area that um, I would call my workshop, and my son one day said, "I'm gonna something about mommy's laboratory." He was talking about my workshop, but he called it my laboratory, and I thought it was so cute that I always called then I always called it after that mommy's laboratory. Um, when it came time to 
uh, make my Etsy shop and do all of this stuff now. Um, I thought that Mommy's Laboratory was, it sounded too much like, um, you know, something for kids, like, I don't know, kids' clothes or, you know, something like that. And so I thought the Mommy part was probably not, not good. Um, my kids are all grown up, so nobody calls me Mommy anymore anyway. Um, and so I just changed it to Miller's Laboratory. Miller's my last name, so... So that's how my shop got its name. And if I if I lived in an ideal world, I would have it look like um, a lab. Um, I, I studied science in school. I, I'm a biology person and um, I would I loved all of that kind of stuff. I'd love to have lab tables and beakers and all of that. And in a perfect world, that's what I would have. Um, but I don't, and that's okay. Oh, that eraser's no good at all. Let's see if I can find a better one here. Just trying to clean up. I got a little bit of glue on there, and it just looks a little dirty. I'm going to see if I can erase it off of there. Um, we are going to be putting masking tape over all of this. So, again, it doesn't matter too much. And I think I'm, I'm just going to leave that as it is for now. Play with it. The glue's still wet, so we'll play with it again in, later. Okay, all right. So I've kind of showed you how I'm going to manage each type of envelope. This one I'm going to save as a pocket, so we're going to line it here. This one, if you remember, is going to be a pocket, so we'll line it here. And I'm going to stop the video now and go ahead and finish all of these, and then I will come back. So hang in there. All right, ta-da, I'm back. And we've got all of the envelopes lined in this little flip-flop flip guy. There's that one we did on camera. Here's the other side. I did the coin envelope. I did this long pocket that's going to be here. This one is, I think we did on camera too, where I'm just covering that up. This one I just put some white in there, and we're going to seal that line that inside of this one here. I think we're 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 good here. There's this one. Alright. So everything is ready to go. Now the next step that I'm gonna do is just take a minute and I'm gonna use my art glitter glue and I'm going to check all of the original seams in the envelopes and make sure everything is glued down nicely. So like here you can see how I can lift that up and I want that to just be glued down really well. So I'm going to go through all of these, checking those sort of little flappy bits and making sure, like this one's kind of loose here, making sure that those are all glued down nice. So I'm going to do that next. I'll turn this off again and I'll be right back. Thanks. All right. And that is all done, and now we're ready for the next step, and that is reinforcing all of the folded edges so that we can stitch in our signatures. Uh, I chose to use masking tape for this, and um, let me just grab the one that I had more done here with the pages already in it. just want to show you what that looks like. It's sort of a grungy look with that masking tape on all of the edges. That's what I was going for here. I wanted it to look um, like a junk journal, kind of, so I, I didn't mind the look of the masking tape. You have lots of options, though, if, if that's not the look you want. Um, this uh, paper packing tape is really nice. It's brown if you want something a little bit more craft colored, you know, you could use that. Um, you could use washi tape, you could use strips of fabric, or you could cut strips of um, paper and glue those on there. I, I said this in the last video, but I do think you need to reinforce it because you're going to be stitching and you don't want your um, stitching to pull through and your pages to tear out. So, so I'm going to just open this up a little bit so I'm working with it flat. And everywhere that I have an intersection of envelopes, I'm going to be putting a strip of masking tape. You don't have to watch me do the whole thing here again because, you know, I mean, you've seen somebody tear a piece of tape and stick it down 
you know, you don't have to see it 12 times. So, um, I, you can make it go really nice and neat all the way to the edge. It doesn't have to. I just want to make sure that there's tape where, um, where I'm going to be stitching. And I can see that I've got a little bit of something underneath that. This is one nice thing about masking tape is that you have a little um, forgiveness. So you can lift that up and pull out whatever that is there. What is that? I don't know if it's a... I don't know. I'm just going to take it off because that will drive me insane. I don't want that on there. So I'm just going to pull that tape right off and we'll put a different piece on there. So during the time when I had the camera off and I was um, doing some of the background work, I was thinking about what I said and how I told you about the, the basement flooding and kind of regretting that I said that. I hope that wasn't really gross for people. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I do want to reassure you that um, that was not in my workshop. It was, it was in the utility part of the basement. So... Um, I wouldn't want anyone to think that anything gross was going on in here. So um, I apologize for that if that was a little bit of TMI. All right. But you know what? That's life. That's my life. It's the kind of stuff that happens. And, you know, it is what it is. So... All right, this piece we're going to do just a little bit longer. So you can kind of get the idea here of what I'm doing. It's not it's not supposed to be pretty necessarily. It's more functional and that's that's how I want it to look. So, okay. So I'm going to continue to go through this journal all the way through reinforcing on this side and then I will be flipping it over and we're going to be doing it on the other side. I'm going to do a couple of them here because this is a little more fussy. We're going to be putting tape here, but we don't want to tape this closed. So our tape is going to have to slip underneath and inside that envelope a little bit. So you just have to be mindful of what needs to happen with each, each spot so that you're not messing anything up. Stick it under there like that. Down like that. Here we're going to do the same thing. Just come right along this edge. And that kind of a narrow bit up there. So I'm just going to tear that down a little bit in case we come close to that edge. It won't be sticking over. Yeah, we're all right. Some of my pieces of tape aren't even on here perfectly straight, and I didn't let that bother me. So, um, But you can make this as neat and perfect and pretty as you want to. These, these could be made in any style. Now this is nice and stiff because it's got tape on both sides, and it's just going to make a really nice sturdy um, book when we're all done. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera off and get that done, and I'll be right back. Thanks. All right, guys, we got all the tape on. If you can look here, all my edges have masking tape and are nice and, and sturdy. And I just went through with um, my bone folder and creased them down so they're nice and sharp. And so that is all ready to go. Now I'm just going to do one more thing in this video today. And then the putting the signatures in we will save for the next one. All right. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to prepare the two envelopes that are going to be top loading. So I'm going to be cutting just a very tiny bit off the top of this envelope and then punching a thumb notch in. So um, this one I'm making sure there's nothing on the other side here. And I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and just cut a very little slice off the top there just to get rid of that fold. And that will open up the envelope for me. And then when I get to here, I'll just snip that off. Okay. So now it's open. 
and we can put something down inside of there. And because of the way we closed this up, the whole envelope is um, available to me, the whole inside all the way to the crease here. All right. So one thing I did just a little different with these is normally we use our circle punch to do the thumb notch, and I like that. I use an oval one sometimes too, but sometimes I like to, to do something a little different, and so I'm going to use this really cool, I don't know if this is like a label punch, I'm not sure what it was meant for, but I really like the shape of it, and I'm just going to use that to cut an interesting shaped hole here. So I'm going to cut it about not real deep and I'm just making sure I have about the same amount on both sides here. Pop that out and it makes just a kind of a really cool shaped um, thumb notch here and then when I put my tag in it will stick out a little bit over the top and it'll make it really easy to grab and pull out. Okay so we have one more in here this um, this plain white one is also going to be a top loader, so I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm going to cut just a little bit of a notch off of this one. And because this flap kind of came over a little bit onto the next one, I'm just going to cut that off and all the way straight across there. A little bit more. A little bit less. <laughs> That's okay. All right, get my little scissors here. Come in here because I don't want to snip that other envelope at all. And then we'll take this off here like this. There we go. Okay. So now we have the same situation here where we have a pocket that we can get into now. And this one I'm just going to use my circle punch. And this is a problematic circle punch. Sometimes it punches a nice circle for me. Sometimes it does not. It does help if I add a little bit of extra paper on there, I find. So I'm going to slip a little bit of um, glue, glue book page on there as well. Punch it and there we go. All right. So there we go, guys. We are all ready to get our papers together and stitch our signatures in. So I will have that part three for you as soon as I'm able. In the meantime, if you're working on one, I hope that you have a good time with it. And um, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will be seeing you soon. Bye.